to Vlogtober Day 16. So today, the plan was to go to Burlington. I wanted to look for my baby a coat. I went on Eddie Bauer's site. Um, that's why I wanted to get his coat from. That's where I normally get his winter coats from. And they had coats, but the coats that I wanted, they didn't have them in stock. And I'm like, you know, the temperature's kind of getting crazy. So I'm like, he needs a, another coat now. But y'all, I... <sighs> I was so disheartened. I went, I had footage and everything. I, I ended up going to Panda, y'all, as well. Um, I was so just completely disheartened by the condition of the stores in River Oaks that I couldn't even, I just didn't even want to vlog no more. So I had footage from being in River Oaks, um, Burlington. Um, I went to the River Oaks Mall to pick my baby clothes up. Cause I ordered clothes offline for him and then I wanted to pick him up at the children's place. When I tell y'all, I am so tired of the treatment that black people get all the way around the board, all the way around the board. When it comes to the way people speak to us, the way we speak to each other, the things that um, people try to do to us, how they try to like keep us down or make us feel like we're less than. I know it happens in all races, but it's most prevalent in my opinion and within the black uh, race or with the black race. Y'all, the condition of the Burlington and River Oaks was so destitute and dirty and just everything was in disarray. Yes, I, I went in the afternoon, but even still, even still, even still, because when I went to the Burlington, when I ended up going to the Burlington, although I still didn't find him no coat, but when I ended up going to the Burlington in Homewood, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that because it's all different types of races that go to the Burlington in um, Homewood. So I feel like they, they're going to take a little bit better care of it. So the one in River Oaks, um, the majority of people that I saw were black and like Hispanic people. When I tell y'all, it was so, it was so damn dirty. It was so dirty. It was, it was dingy. Everything was thrown about. Now this Burlington, so you know, stuff don't normally be where it's supposed to be. So I wasn't really tripping on that. It was just the dirt. It was stinking. It was just, it was horrible. The shopping experience was just completely lackluster because it looked so dirty and nasty. And it was just like, this is what we get. The Walmart, they used to have like up in that space. If you're from Chicago, you know. But so they moved the Walmart down a couple blocks to like the Lansing side. And me and my mom had went in there one day because we needed baby wipes. Um, and so we wanted to just get in and get out real quick. When I tell y'all, it was it stunk so so damn bad up in there. Like the Walmart, the way that, that Walmart is set up, the meat department is in the back. When we walked through the door, it was stinking. It smelled like rotten old meat dirty blood so we would start turned off by it we didn't want nothing we went in there to get diaper wipe diaper wipes and swim shoes because this was like right before the trip we couldn't even shop in there it, it was thinking so bad but what was even worse was the amount of black people that was in there that was walking around like they didn't smell what we smelled this is a mushroom chicken, y'all. And so I'm just like, it's so, I feel like black people, a lot of black people are so used to the poor treatment and we're just like, this is how it's supposed to be. And it's not. It's absolutely not. I definitely did not think that today was going to go this way where this was going to be the video that I was going to be posting. I thought I was going to be posting like vlog footage. When I tell y'all, I am so pissed. Black people, are, we are the number one consumers across the board. We have the ability to create the change that we want to see. But I feel like we have spent so much time being treated poorly when it comes to things that are in um, our neighborhoods. If it's neighborhoods that are predominantly black, if it's neighborhoods that are predominantly 
mixed with black and Hispanics, we are so used to being treated poorly that we don't even look to better or look for better. It's it's absolutely ridiculous. They want to sit and talk about, oh, yeah, you know, black people, they had a highest rate of diabetes. But look at what we have. Y'all put us in areas. Y'all say, okay, well, you, you, move in this area because you you made everything else so, so damn hard to get into or so hard to get into. So we, we move into areas that was once very nice. But then y'all don't want to come and clean the streets. That's something that the city's supposed to do. Y'all don't want to come and clean the streets. It's rodents and stuff that's out in the streets. Y'all don't want to really do nothing about that. Then y'all want to pop up liquor stores everywhere. Every two blocks, every one block, it's a liquor store, church, liquor store, church, daycare, liquor store, church, daycare, Popeyes, liquor store, church, daycare, Popeyes, White Castles, KFC. So it's like, then, then you got to go, you get, you need a car to be able to drive to the grocery store. And then the grocery stores will be destitute as well. They have poor products, poor packaging, poor management, and nobody is doing the things that they want to do. And then they're like, oh, black people, they so unhealthy. But look at what you, look at what we have in our area to choose from. I just, this trip made me so sad because we just accepted it. And we have the power to change it. We have the power to make them respect us. We don't have to shop there. But the bad thing about it is a lot of people that's in that area that do need to shop there. Because that's the closest thing to them because they don't have the means of transportation to go farther into different areas to get better. I literally got on the, I literally got back in the car, drove ten minutes to Homewood. Completely different experience. Completely different experience. Even the streets are cleaner. So I'm just like, we have to know that we deserve better. We we just have to. It took George Floyd to, to be murdered in the streets on camera for people to actually be like, oh, I guess y'all really wasn't exaggerating about the way that y'all said y'all was treated. It took that. In the 2000s, it took, it took that. It took till then for people to actually open their eyes and, and show some type of outrage about it. This shit is sickening. And I'm like completely over it i'm never going to river oaks again i don't i don't give a damn i ordered aiden's clothes offline i picked them up at river oaks because i'm like that was the closest children's place to me from uh yeah that was the closest children's place to me when i tell y'all i'm never i'll go i'll go out my way before i go back to, to river oaks and put a dime into that area because the the treatment is just it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous. Now, the shoe carnival over there, that's a little bit um towards the beginning of River Oaks. The shoe carnival over there, that was, that was decent. That's where I ended up getting Aiden's school shoes from. But it's just like, it's bad because at, on one point, it's like, I don't want to shop there because of the way that we're being treated. But then in another way, it's like, okay, if everybody feels the way that I feel and they all start shopping over there, they're going to end up closing the stores down. So then the people that actually are over there that really need those stores to stay open because they really don't have the mode of transportation to go farther than that, now it's going to put them in an even worse situation because now it's like, now we don't even have the crappy stores to choose from. It's just... When I tell y'all, it just put me in a mood. It put me in a complete mood today was supposed to be like a vlog day it was supposed to be a vlog day and i'm sitting here like ranting about the treatment nobody deserves to have to shop like that the, the fucking parking lot at the burlington and river oh it's the fucking parking lot gravel it should have been repaved it should have been repaved the one at home what they would never excuse me they would never it's, it's too many it's too many white people that might frequent that area it's too many people who actually might be in a different tax bracket that will actually say something and that's that's one thing that that you learn and that i have learned living in the area that i live in and knowing about living in different areas when you are a lot of times when people are of a lower income and this could be any any race any ethnicity whatever when you are in a lower income area, you tend to be silent on more things. 
And so they treat you any kind of way because they feel like you ain't finna say shit. You not finna say shit. But when they know that you are in a higher income area, they don't do that shit. They don't do that shit because they're like, we know that y'all complain. We know that y'all have some shit to say and, and, and stuff will get popping. So in situations like, for instance, it was a time a couple years ago where Chicago had a, a power outage. Like all of Chicago was a power outage. Now I don't live in Chicago. I don't stay too far from it, but I don't live in Chicago. But the area that I live in is a higher income area the the tax bracket over here is very different from a lot of other areas so the city lights went off cities like what city lights was out people was in the city people was not even far from me not even far from where i live no lights weeks no lights food was was food um spoiled they didn't have no lights it was the winter time it was the winter time. You know how long our lights was out? Less than 24 hours. Less than 24 hours. The lights went out at about 8. When everybody in the city and people li literally, ten, uh, areas literally 10, 15 minutes away from us. Their lights had been out for 4, 5, 6 days. Our lights went out. When their lights was out for 6 days, our lights went out for the first time. When I tell you, the lights went out at maybe like 8 o'clock at night. And when we woke up, the lights, the lights probably came back on at like two in the morning, three, four. We, you, we went to the bathroom in the middle of the night. The lights was on. Lights came on. I'm, I ain't even, let me, let me stop. Lights went out at about eight o'clock. By six o'clock that morning, the lights was back on. They went out about eight o'clock at night. By six o'clock that morning, the lights was back on and stayed on stayed on people that we knew that was 10 15 minutes away from us that was living in a lower income area or an area where they don't care about as much as the area that we in because if you know anything about illinois you know illinois is choppy baby it's very choppy baby so you'll go and you'll be in an area where it's mansions you'll drive five minutes and it's it looks like huh destitute is it, illinois is choppy so our lights got cut right back on, right back on. We, we wasn't even without lights for 24 hours, not even for 24 hours were we without lights, but we had people that we knew that was not far from us. Even 30 minutes, a 30 minute drive is not far. Lights been out weeks, weeks, lights was off, weeks. No heat, weeks, food spoiled. Did they get compensated? No. They get apology? No. Did they get some money off of a future bill? No. Did they get money put in their accounts for extra food? No. And so this is why I know that because they knew that if they kept the lights off in this area too long, we was going to start complaining. And they're like, we don't want that. So it's like the government, the world, they make higher income people areas priority because they feel like and I, I believe that they feel like the higher income people in the higher income areas they're going to complain and they know to hit us in our pockets people that might be in lower income areas or areas where they might feel like which they shouldn't they might feel like like we you know we don't really have a leg to stand on we really should comp we really shouldn't complain about stuff we had an emergency and we had to call 911. When I tell you maybe two minutes, maybe two minutes it took them to get to us. Maybe two minutes. Maybe two. If this would have been in the city, we'd probably still be waiting on them. We would probably still be waiting on them. This is the this is the shit that I'm talking about. And it, it, it is not fair and it's not cool. Everybody deserves the same type of treatment. And I feel like the same type of treatment that they give motherfuckers in Orland Park, the same type of treatment that they give motherfuckers in Homewood, that, that should be the same type of treatment that you're giving people in Lansing and, and River Oaks and any other area. But because they're like, oh, it's, it's lower income people, it's lower income housing over here, it's lower income areas over here. They're like, we don't have to, we don't really have to do nothing with them. We could just give them scraps and they'll be okay. 
and then we take the scraps. When you're taking what they're giving you and you're not complaining about it, they're going to keep giving it to you. If that Walmart that's in Lansing was set up the way it was set up and home with an Orland Park, that bitch would have been closed down. If that Burlington and River Oaks was set up in Orland Park or Homewood the way that it's set up now, that bitch would have been closed down. But they doing it in these areas because of the people that frequent the areas. Because they're like, okay, it's, it's mostly black and Hispanic people. Black and brown people, if you will, that frequent this area. So we're not finna push, we're not finna push for nothing because this is a this is an area that we we consider to be a lower income area. So because it's a lower income area in this specific area, we're not finna go above and beyond for them. We we're gonna go above and beyond for the motherfuckers that's in the higher income areas. If if it's like you feel fortunate that you get to live in a in a higher income lifestyle but at the same time it's shitty because it's like you see other people who live in the lower income areas they not people don't live in lower income areas because they want to live in lower income areas that's where that's where it's affordable for them that's where it's affordable for them so that's where they live you feel like that should be treated worse you feel like they should be a priority I can literally go on and on. I'm not gonna make this video too long. I'm like super pissed, super upset. I was hungry. I ain't even really got an appetite no more. I'm just, I'm over it. And this shit needs to stop. Black people, especially, we deserve better. And they know we deserve better. But if we're not asking for better, if we're not demanding better, because don't ask for shit. If we are not demanding better, they're not going to give us better. They are not. As long as we sitting around like, well, you know, it's better than nothing. But it is nothing. But it is nothing. For so long, for so, for so long, we've sat around and just accepted the bare minimum. Less than the bare minimum. And that's this it's time out for that shit it's 2022 it's no reason why we should still be being treated a certain type of way because of the areas that we live in because we know that okay well let me go to let me go to early park because that's a higher income area so i know the stores are going to be better you shouldn't have to think like that you should be like we could go anywhere shop anywhere and the store the store quality will be the same especially motherfucking walmart it's walmart's everywhere the government is, is constantly, oh, we got 50,000 Walmart positions open. We have 80,000 Walmart positions open. As much money as Walmart making, and y'all not prioritizing black people. And I guarantee you black people are the largest consumers at Walmart because we go to Walmart for every fucking thing. Every fucking thing. So it's, it's just so, it's so disheartening. It's such a mixed emotion type thing because on one hand, I feel fortunate that I get to live in the lifestyle that I get to live in. But at the same time, it's disheartening that you got stores that I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go to this store because it's close to me. It's it's a 15 minute drive compared to a 20 minute drive. So I'm like, okay, let me go to like the little 15 minute drive. And the spaces and the areas are totally different. They're totally different. Do I want to shop with mostly white people? Fuck no. I want to shop with my people. I want to be around my people. Just like a lot of white people want to shop around, they want to shop around other white people. Black people want to shop around other black people. Spanish people probably want to shop around other Spanish people. You, you're going to feel comfortable around the people that look like you. And it's not a, a racist thing. You, you, you feel comfortable around the people who look like you. That doesn't mean I feel uncomfortable when I'm around white people. No. I don't feel uncomfortable when I'm around any group of people. But I like the shared experience that black people bring. I like the razzle dazzle that we add to everything. So yeah, I wanna I wanna be around my people. I wanna shop around my people. I wanna shop with my people. I like going to a counter and it's a black checkout person. Yeah, I, I do. I do. It's just, it's, it's racial injustices, racial inequalities. Just all this shit is ridiculous. 
it's ridiculous and then on top of everything else on top of all of this shit we actually got black people who being mean and nasty and disrespectful and in in prejudice towards other black people being colorist towards other black people it's like it, it, it ain't enough that every fucking body else doing it to us we gotta do it to us too everybody hates us including us they don't feel like we deserve nothing better than what the fuck we getting and we just sitting here and taking it we just sitting here and accepting it and the fucked up part is if we pull our money back the people that's in these areas that actually need these stores are going to be in an even more messed up area in an even more messed up space because now the stores that they did have are, are being taken away it's literally a lose-lose situation like you either accept the bullshit that we're giving you or we'll give you nothing